After a surprising 2-1 start to the NFL season, the Express find themselves now at 2-6 due to a five-game losing streak, prompting owner Peyton Manning to call a meeting with myself and Chad pa- I mean, Coach Eli Manning. The meeting was called due to Peyton's hesitancy with his strategy to build strictly through rookie players and whether or not that could result in long-term success. Peyton was known as a very smart player during his playing career and believes in the value of veterans like Marvin Harrison and Dallas Clark during his time in Indianapolis. However, I am very committed as the GM to the strategy of using rookies only to build a contending team. With the divide made clear, a compromise needed to be made. The San Antonio Express will be signing six veteran players to fill the mentor-slash-player-coach role. They will be on the roster but last on the depth chart. They won't play on Sundays but will provide valuable experience to the young guys during weekly practices. The six mentors will be split up between three offense and three defense. And that brings us to our next week in the NFL season. And welcome back into the channel once again for another episode of our Madden 23 San Antonio Express expansion draft only franchise. I guess we can't call it draft only anymore since the intro to this video as Lewis Smart. I thought it was going to be Eddie Hazleton, but it'll be Lewis Smart getting the chance to break out even better. I would love for him to go up to superstar for sure. But yes, of course, in terms of players who are actually playing, it'll still be rookie only. We are adding mentors. The purpose of this franchise is to impose a challenge on roster building, right? Without being able to use free agency or trading for players starting from scratch, all rookies. Um, but without having mentors, that's actually a pretty big disadvantage in terms of developing guys is mentors actually make a pretty nice impact on the development of young players. And the point of this series is not to make developing young guys harder. Um, that's the only way we can actually build a team. And so I don't want to make that process harder. So I hope, I hope that the storyline little storyline that i created to justify the signing of mentors made some sort of sense as we finish up our weekly training we see that we have upgrades here as well as um, for the first time we have the ability to look into resigning players might try to squeeze that into this episode as we do have the bye week this episode, so this, there's no second game to fast sim. We'll just be going through the bye week, so we might get a sneak peek into player re-signings, as well as our another deep dive into a position in the draft. 85 power moves for Timmy Reeve. We have a couple things there in the dark green, including tackle, which is playing up. And we see a couple of our veterans who we will not upgrade manually. Frank Wall, however, is one of our interior defensive linemen who plays, so we'll uh, upgrade him. We'll go with some speed rusher as his traits align with the speed rushing archetype. Gets a two block shed and one finesse move. I will take that. It's more like a run stopper upgrade than a finesse one, but I'll take it nonetheless. He needs both block shedding and finesse moves, so can't complain about that as we will take our look here at the draft class continuing our deep dive here we will go with the defensive line this time around starting with left end eric nelson 6'3 310 pound player definitely a 3-4 end b block shedding and b power moves a tackle c awareness He's got the strength, not very fast as we saw, but he's a very solid player. No A's, but he's like probably around a three on the prospect scale. John Underwood, not as strong, but a little bit faster with the A power moves as well. You love to see that. A year younger, he's another guy who 
looks really good. The problem is he's more of a size of like a 4-3 end, right? And so I'd prefer some more size there, but he looks good. So probably a 3 as well. Nick Pinkins here, not as good of an athlete. He is lower down on the draft board as well, but B finesse moves, not a terrible athlete. Probably give him like a 2. And then lastly here we have... Senor Kevin Robertson, another 3-4-N kind of guy. Block shedding A to C for a day three guy, having maybe the potential of an A block shed. Very intriguing. Probably a prospect rating of three for him. I have these ones all mixed up here, but we'll start with Copeland, who's the highest. Good to great strength, decent to solid speed. We've been seeing that a lot. A block shed and A play rec. His pass rush moves aren't great, but we do desperately need run stopping. And so from a 3-4 end, could be good. Cameron Gibson, another one. There's a lot of 3-4 ends here. Uh, not a lot of 4-3 type ends that we like, but another guy with A block shedding. Not great pass rush moves. Has strength. Both of those guys are like a 2. I'd prefer guys that could pass rush in the first round. But uh, Akeem Acosta has no strength. Definitely he's one of the 4-3 edge kind of guys. B finesse moves, you can get him later in the draft but still not like a great looking prospect so we'll give him a prospect rating of two and then uh oh i already went through alton copeland right yeah i went through him first so no need to go back through him i believe cassidy davis is the last guy we have not gone through 23 years old Another guy with this same build, but having B block shed and B power moves on day three, it's going to push him up to a prospect rating of three on my board. Maybe even four. Nah, he's three because he's 21 years old. Got nine defensive tackles on our board this time around. Let's go in and take a look here. We got Roger McCrary, who's good, not great athlete, and skills are good, not great as well for around one guy. I think we're just taking him off our board. I actually don't like him that much at all. I mean, I'd, I'd like that build for later in the draft, but for being the best one in the whole draft, no way. A play rec, A power moves, A to C block shed as well here. Monty Booker looks pretty good. I'll give him a three rating in terms of draftability. Terrence Swift, not very strong. Somebody you kick out to edge with, not, sorry, edge, but end in the 3-4. Um, a finesse moves. I still would prefer higher strength, so he gets a prospect rating of two. Quincy Bost here. Um, doesn't look great. Uh, we're taking him off the board. All right, Eric Silas, 22 years old. He's got some speed to him. Not as strong, but a finesse moves. Another guy you'd kick out to end in the 3-4. Um, a finesse moves in the mid-rounds, I'd give him a prospect rating of three. Barry Irwin, um, another guy with potential, A block shedding, solid athlete, day three. That's a rating of three, I would say, out of five. Armand Walton, he looks meh. He's probably like a one to me. Not really a strong athlete, doesn't have a lot of pronounced skills, but for a day three guy, he's still willing to take him. Harold Beckham here has better strength and get off A to C block shedding. He's definitely a guy that I would consider a three in the prospect rating scale. And Corey Still. Um, another guy with great speed, not really, I'm sorry, great strength. But no really pronounced skills. He's going to get a two. And that will bring us to re-signings. Like I said, we're going to give our first crack at that this time around. I don't believe Jeremiah Black would be looking for a four-year deal with no money. But we will offer him two years eight, and he will accept. What I'm going to do here is anyone who has interest in signing here and won't ask for more money than they're worth, we're going to try to re-sign. I think maybe a three-year... Nine million for Caleb Bass, and he will accept that. 
We got Jonathan Rambo next, 21 years old. I'll go two years, seven for him. And he will re-sign too, getting a lot of re-signings done in this episode. Lance McAllister, our best safety. Um, looking for two years at a million a pop. He will say yes. That's a nice deal for us, for sure. Going through, I'm not sure about Taj Clement. He's just really slow. He has good spec catch, though. Lloyd Leonard. Next up on the list. Probably doing another two-year deal, and he does not want to sign that deal. First person to decline us here today. Paul Parnell, another two-year deal. We're kicking a lot of things two years down the road, but I think by then we'll have a better idea of our team needs. After having a couple more drafts to kind of fill out the roster, this last draft we just took... The best player every time I thought we were on the board. Um, the next two drafts will kind of fill it out. So hopefully we have somebody that we're excited about at every position. And then, yeah, hopefully we just have a better idea of whether we want to re-sign players longer term at that point. For now, one, two, three-year deals at Maddox is kind of what we're looking for. Tony Bethel will go two years at a million a year, and he says yes. A lot of people coming back for us, which is what we need. We need, at the very minimum, we just need bodies on the roster. I'm not signing any of these guys to be long-term starters. I don't think we got any long-term starting level players in UDFA this time around. Um... I mean, they might become long-term starters, just nobody that I am confident in right now that they'll be that for us from the UDFA class. So, not looking to lock, lock anyone up too long-term. Got Vernon Landry here at tight end. Man, he's, he's asking for a decent bit of money for how low overall he is, but we'll sign him up to it. We have plenty of money. Until, what, like year four or five of this rebuild, we're going to have a ton of money. As we won't really need to resign anyone but UDFAs until our first draft class, their contract comes up. Which is either four or five years, depending on if they were a first round pick, and if we want to pick up their fifth year option. So yeah, we're going to be having a bunch of money for the foreseeable future on this team. And Lloyd Leonard, we might come back to later. Maybe not. Maybe we just give these guys one opportunity to sign a contract. And if they say no, we're done with them. That will get us ready to play the Dolphins here in prime time in Miami. This is an awesome field. Going against some awesome jerseys, as we saw Jeremiah Black had three rush touchdowns in our game last week. We get down to the goal line. I've been running them in a little bit more than passing, and I would like to get my touchdown to interception ratio up, so maybe we should start passing a little bit more. I know Devin Hamilton doesn't look awful. In general, it doesn't look great, but a lot of that is because he's... His touchdown to interception ratio in our simulated game is very good. So, looking to work on that, and hopefully, the signing of these mentors can help us get a win here in prime time. That'd be a really big win for us against the Dolphins team, who is better than us, although that goes for every team in the league. So far, we've only been able to get wins against the New York team, so we're looking to change that here as how we bring it out to the 23 to start this game off. Devin Hamilton trots out onto the field. We will try to strike first here. Yeah, he has a positive touchdown and interception ratio, but that is not my doing. We'll just put it that way.
start the game off here with a bit of play action. Going to Eddie Hazleton, and he is open. The speed able to help him separate there at the end of the route, and that'll be a nice gain of 17 to start off this game. Very big way to start. Looking to now go towards the run game here on first and 10 from the 40. Holmes will get his first carry of the game and not get too much out of it. Hamilton now from the gun on second and nine, looking to go back to the play action. And that was an awful throw, but somehow it still caught. That was a lot of traffic. Wasn't probably my best decision. I thought there was a little bit of space there, but the throw needed to be perfect. It wasn't, but still ended up with a completion. I will not be complaining. We're going to go deep to Hazleton. Down the field. Can we get the throw? No. Jones was there just enough time to break up the pass. Trying to go for it deep here on the first drive. Score first. We got smart. Wide open on the corner route. And he's got the room for catch and more. Shakes off a tackler. And now first and goal from the eight. That'll be a big help towards his superstar scenario. Getting open on the corner. Baker lost in coverage. Dives for him. Unable to do it. Just throws uh, Javon Holland off of him. Very nice play. We'll go to the run game here on first and goal from the 8 or 50 yards on the day for Leo Smart. And not able to really find any lane that I wanted to take there. We bring up second and goal. Didn't really like anything I saw there. We will take the sack. Baker in on to make the play. That will bring up third and goal from the 18 yard line. See if Rhodes can get up on the streak. We'll throw it. It's probably not the best. Oh, decision. And we're lucky that was going to be If we're being honest, just tried to get a little greedy there. One of the touchdown. Should have been more okay settling for the field goal, which is what we'll do. And not great timing by me, but the kick is still easily good by Welker. I don't know if I showed this on air, but I just used the uh, coaching uh, tree, whatever, to just reveal Welker's dev tray as he was the last one remaining as hidden. We just have the staff points. We are not lacking in staff points in this series. Or we are with the Bears. I'm still very far from completing my uh, coaching tree with the Bears, despite being... I was going to say further, but I guess we're actually pretty close to the same spot because we simulated the year and got staff points for that year. So, oh, what a difference. The slowest makes versus the best coaching uh, point adjuster or whatever. Ready. Second and seven now. Showing 13 personnel are the Dolphins. I don't know why you're running in 13 personnel when you got a duo of Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. But hey, it's not me calling the Black plays. One. It's McDaniel over there. Strong start Black to his White. coaching Black. career with the Dolphins really good and that will be incomplete took everything in my power not to switch onto the defender there because I definitely would have gone for the pick but that will be a quick three and out force by the defense and Rambo will get a decent pump return here oh I thought he had a seam there for a second just short though of breaking that one big, still a very good return, though. No. Not complain about it at all. As we will come out throwing here to start their second drive. Looking for Lewis Smart. I mean, if you don't like how much I look at Lewis Smart regularly, you're not going to like how much I'm going to be targeting him here in his breakout game. 
He's our best player. I mean, I'm not going to apologize for targeting our best player. And that's going to be a fumble. Donovan Holmes and nobody on the express. People are just standing around. Why aren't they going for the football? Somebody returned for a touchdown by Brandon Jones. That's so annoying. My whole team was just staring at the ball. Howard now on the return. Gets past the 20, but not much further than that. And Donovan Holmes drop back on the field. I guess we don't know if it's him or Jan on Black. But early returns in the running game have not been there for us. He's to open over the middle. Nice pitch and catch. Once again, a game out past the 40. This is the second time we've been able to find Eddie Hazleton over the middle. Seven passes, three runs on the day. And there we go, Donovan Holmes able to find some room there. Pick up eight. It's Holmes there on the out route. Not really much there. 32 now. We'll get to pick up the first here. And uh, I had smart. I was certain I'm going to go this way. Didn't have him initially. And then I had him after I had him kind of moved on from the lead. I was looking for smart and roads. But alas, it'll be a fourth down. Definitely should have got the first down there. That's on me. But the Dolphins will start at the 23 yard line. Okay, we're coming out onto the field. Back to pass, and that'll be a sack. The end of Gravel getting there. Very nice move by him. Bringing down to a nice little glove move or whatever that is. Not a club move, it's like a. Come on, I don't know. John Smith will be the user here as they will give to Edmonds, who gains a nice. Bit of yards there, creating a third down and four. Our run defense is very, very bad. But to be fair, so is our pass defense. The defense is not ready to, to repeat. Especially, I'm not saying like I was a great user, but I think a user rubbing one of the field definitely does help. But that's something we're not doing in this series. Not the way the defense we. The, the way the defense plays to be based on ratings. A nice little maneuvering in the pocket there to find Waddle for the first down. Had his hands up as he was wide open. That will be a first down Miami. We will do our defensive adjustments here. Try to go match zone defense. Here we go. Wow, John Smith just got absolutely taken out of that play, but ends up getting back into it. Let's go. And that'll bring up second and ten, no gain. A nice run stop there by the defense. It was nice hole created up the middle there. We bring up third and inches. Nine and a half yard run there. Don't love to see it. Can't really be surprised to see it though. It's kind of a bit hard for us to stop the run all year long. And we got the pass rush win, but that was a quick play to Waddle. Didn't give any time for the pass rush to get there. Caleb Bass recently re-signed. He's the only player we re-signed with into the third year, I believe. Might be catching on that, but I don't think 
And just look at this blocking. We can't shut block with anything though. Need a turnover here. Don't want to go down by two scores this early in the game. Miami will just take that full momentum, and it will be hard to come back from that. Momentum does play a big factor in the game. We just got absolutely taken out of the play again. We are not strong at the point of attack. Bring Giles up just to hopefully maybe avoid as much double teaming. And this doesn't work out. <laughs> You're just getting pounded into oblivion here on this ride. You can't defend anything. Time play action for Tua, and he's got his man. That's a touchdown, and the Dolphins will go up 14 to 3 to start the second quarter. If I was a running back, I'd be kind of mad with all the work and the one yard line not being allowed to punch it in. But lo and behold, it's still 14 to 3. Maybe if we had some like S2 return, we return everything, but we don't. Looking to do the play actions. We're we'll press fit this game and kind of already rolling out by the time he can take the game open down the field. And we lose a yard there. Can't even beat Christian Wilkins to the spot. Lewis Smart gets open late, and that is an absolutely beautiful throw by Devin Hamilton. Facing some pressure there. It took a while for Smart to become open. Had to hang in there. Nice job by the offensive line to give him enough time for that. To make that play barely enough time, but enough time for Lewis. Agenton will be open on the corner, just enough to make the play. Oh, stepped out of bounds there as Hamilton's averaging 20 yards of completion here. So definitely throwing more downfield in this game. Not every pass, you got to throw some check downs, but I've not been afraid to go for the downfield options. That screen play will be successful as well. 15 yards. Get us halfway to the end zone from our previous spot. Put of the run game now for Black. Not too much there to be had. That will be a game of two. We'll go to the play action. We're actually... Just going to try to check out no run right there. Look like a good option that we're just going to throw this one away. What I haven't done with this custom playbook is I haven't changed the audible. It's something I would like to do. But I haven't done it quite yet. We'll just throw that one away. Nothing came open there. Had a few routes I liked. I didn't like how any of them managed to come out. We have definitely been struggling getting open against man coverage this season. Um, Just don't really have anyone that's that great of a man beater. We did trim it down to a one possession game, but still you'd love for us to be able to finish those drives off that we get into the red zone. Oh for two on touchdowns in the red zone now. Not doing a great job myself of getting the right plays called, I suppose. Here we go, set. To, uh, from empty to start this next drive. Probably for the best. I think we've 
been absolutely gassed in the run game, but the pass game we're doing a little bit better. When the Dolphins run the ball, at least early so far, that they've absolutely gashed us as we see it once again. Already 10 rushes for 75 yards for Edmonds. Like, we're not playing Jonathan Taylor here, we're playing Edmonds. The Miami offensive line isn't anything special, but we're just, we can't do anything. And that will be intercepted McAllister. He might house this one. And he will. McAllister for the pick six. What a play. Timmy Reed getting a, giving a little bit of pressure into Tua's face. Maybe didn't see the ball hawking McAllister in the area. We're going to try to tie this game up here. I know it's a little bit early to be caring about that, but why? might as well try. I don't love what we're seeing here. Take the sack. All right, it will remain 12-14. My struggles in finding someone once we get into the red zone continue. We see Edmonds numbers once again. He's just destroyed us. I mean, we've never had good luck against the run, but this seems like the worst week of all of them. Very like a team that you wouldn't suspect for us to have our worst game against, for sure. Ready. Nice job fighting the double team there. Creating a little bit of murkiness there for on, the back. We held him to four, which to you may seem like an average run, but to us tonight, that's an absolute success. And that'll be broken up. They're not gonna call DPI, are they? That's not DPI, that's good. Play, and that is not the call, so we will take the fourth down stop. Glad it was the defensive pass interference. That was just great coverage from Pepsi Boston. Rambo back to return the punt. Has some room and shakes off a man. He's still going. Can he outrun Mostert? It looks like is that mm -hmm. Mostert? Why? Is... No, Mostert wouldn't be an expert. He's not even starting a running back. It must be a rookie there for the Dolphins. Being an X-Factor. Nice pick by them. We'll try to get it late to your two smart. Didn't really love a lot of the routes there. I like this box for the run, so we're going to run it here. And we'll get a nice solid game. That'll be the first down run. Donovan Holmes, nice. Nice audible there by Devin Hamilton. Seeing the light box. Checking to the run. We're going to go right back to it here. Eddie Hazleton being the lead blocker. And he gets a nice block, and that will spring Jeremiah Black out inside the red zone once again. San Antonio Express with a good chance to take a lead here. Another very light box for a run. We're going to check to it here. And uh, I should. Second and eight. We'll try to hit Hazleton and he'll get it to the pylon, but he hit the pylon. That's a touchdown. Pylon is the end zone. But they're going to say he's sure. I guess he touched it with his hand, not the ball. Rhodes there being uncovered. Could just try to like throw a screen or something, and that's not gonna work. Okay. Home there with a nice recovery. Gonna check here to the run and Black gets stops. Wow. 
Oh, just instant shed there. I don't even. I'm not even sure if he got touched. He did, but barely. I mean, our center is like 60. If we're being fair. But now we've been, been going backwards. Red zone struggles continue for the Express here tonight. We'll find Slayton and he will fight his way into the end zone. Touchdown, San Antonio. We will take the lead here in Miami. 3.44 left in this half. will make it 19-14. Not a score you see all too often. Finally being able to punch something into the end zone on offense. Feels great though. Wow, it's like Edmonds literally only had one touch no touch since the last time he showed that graphic. Check white. Commit First red. and ten now for the Dolphins. And wow. Chase Edmonds looking like Derrick Henry out there with that step on. What the heck is that? Man needs to calm down with some of these running backs bring some of these tackles. Oh, already over 100 yards on the day for Evans. We we're just getting absolutely destroyed on in our blocks. We need Ready? interior defensive line help badly. Here we go. Timmy Reed cannot do this alone. And that would be dropped on the play by Jalen Waddle. Had a little bit of separation there on the slant. Got Waddle uncovered. Want to pull up and try to cover him. And that'll be a first down completion on third down. Edmonds was wide open in the flat. Run a little bit of a zone blitz here. First and ten, maybe you try to get some pressure on Tua. Dolphins block it up well, and he's got plenty of time to wait for a six on first down. Still just 37 yards passing. And a few more there. Is that will be a nice tackle there by Defensive Boston to keep Gesicki from getting the first down. Ramble with a nice move, but are they gonna, they're still going to give him the first down. It looks like he broke the tackle and then got tackled behind. But Madden's going to give him the credit for the first down. I don't feel like I agree with that call. And once again, Edmund just has a massive hole. I, I don't understand it. My Dolphins off the interior offensive line is not that great. Why are they absolutely... I mean, neither is our interior defensive line. I know that's fair, but like... Oh, that should have been a pick. This level of domination? I don't know, man. And Boston was just too late there. Breaking on the ball to get the pick, but we still got third and five now for the Dolphins. He's running out the clock, trying to retake the lead right before the half. And that'll be a uh, first down to the one for Tyreek Hill. Does get his feet down inbounds. Indeed, he did. Wouldn't be able to challenge it anyway, even if we disagreed, as we are inside the final two minutes. Gonna play a little bit deep here by Stanton. Can try to go towards the running back, and that'll be a sack. Pemphile in on the pressure. Hard to run play action and get the ball off when you're facing the front like we showed there. 
And we hold the Dolphins ready? to nothing. And that might be the last play. We'll see if they can get another one off. And they can. We just have to get a stop here on the final play of the half. Tua has time and he's just going to throw this one away. We will take a 19-14 lead into halftime. I feel like we played fairly well. My red zone efficiency hasn't been great, but other than that, doing pretty good. And then obviously our inability to stop the run. You'd think maybe I'd stop the run here, but they are down, so they might just increase the rate in which they're passing. That's why I'm going to do short pass, even though they've absolutely gashed us in the run game. If they end up winning because they have like 250 yards on the ground, and that's on me, obviously, for not switching it. I just think the run pass ratio might go a little bit more towards pass here in the second half. Especially if our offense can keep the pressure on throughout the second half. And a nice start to defending the run there. Zero yard gain. Check white. Smith red. Opposite. Green. Who knows? Maybe defending the pass is the best way to defend the run. Probably not. But well, maybe. Yellow one. Blue check. Check pink. You're on third and two. Just another gaping hole for the running back to go through. Ready. First and ten now for the Dolphins, and that'll be another give to uh, Edmonds. But that time, Pembao was there to make the, a good tackle in open space, limiting the pickup to just two yards. And that's another just massive hole. My goodness, our linebackers are not good against the run, our interior defensive line is not good against the run. We, as a team, are not good against the run. That'll be a nice play, Michael Franklin. Bring in the pressure. Bring in more than they could block. Hoping the free man can get Edmonds go, down, being that he's not that good of a running back, and the strategy works out that time around. Losing two. But over the middle, nice throw by Tua. Right over the head of Franklin. Here we go. In motion now is the tight end. Probably going to be a run play up the middle, will be my guess, and yes, it will be. I guess a little bit off to the right instead of right up the middle, but man. This game does not prove to you our need to prioritize our front seven in the next draft. Yeah, I feel like I'm same in the same spot with the Bears franchise, right? Where I feel like both teams desperately need some front seven help. In the case of our Bears franchise, it's not keeping us from success. That was a nice juke there by and we'll get him the first round. Because our team is fairly good this year. But there are times when you can tell that that front seven is going to need some help in the pass rush in that series. This one I feel like more than any. I mean, we do need help in the pass rush, but just this running game today has proven just how, like, we're in need of. Probably need to draft two interior defensive line in the next draft. Fortunately for us today, as we preview the defensive line in the draft, we know that there's a lot of viable options. I mean, we could probably use better run stopping linebackers as well, but the fact that we have two that are already 70 plus, one of them is star, it's just not a position that we can really prioritize in the next draft. 
Maybe we can pick up one in like the fourth or fifth round, but even then we just have so many other positions we need to fill that we don't have somebody that we like as a long-term developmental piece yet. And Lewis Smart downfield is open. Saw the, the flat was open as well, but decided to go for the more aggressive route. And it works out for me. Now 30 plays, 18 passes to 12 runs. This time we will take the quick check, check down. Black shakes past one man, or I guess trucks past him would be the more apt description. And Dane seven. Looking for the run play here and not able to really get anything. Brings up third and four. Going to one of my favorite plays in the playbook here in Dagger. I like all four routes. There's not a lot of plays where I like all four routes. And that'll be a first down San Antonio to Lewis Smart once again. The best player on this offensive side of the ball. Look to get him to superstar, of course. Can't have to a few there for Jeremiah Black. On the play action, we've got a guy open deep downfield, but we can't hit him. Add Slayton for a big game, incomplete instead. go vertical here on third and seven we're gonna give our man Lewis Smart a chance and that's gonna be picked undercut the route did Javon Holland very nice job it was really open he just tried to give Lewis Smart a chance one-on-one -on -one, and it did not work out for us not a very well placed ball by Hamilton I'm trying to bring some pressure here and that'll be a big game to Kasiki he's still going Why'd you dive? Just make the tackle, dude. Just get yourself in position to make a tackle. There's no need to dive right there. The zero blitz did not work out. We didn't even really get pressure on him. Nice run stop there. I think Edmonds just kind of ran into his own man. But I have no idea what really happened there. Touch pass to Waddle, tries to cut it up the field, but we were ready for it. Third and seven coming up. Could really use a stop here. And the screen pass will be open. Can we keep him from the first? We cannot. Kenny Pantheo can't make the tackle. It's probably because I clicked on him. I clicked on him to get him in position for that. I don't know, if you're the user defender, Madden will not allow you to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle. It's really weird in this game. Tua will end up throwing the ball away. Nice coverage there on the first. Got some pressure on Tua, forcing the incompletion there. Very nice job by the defense. Bringing up third and ten. Flag down on the play as that'll be a touchdown pass. What a throw and catch, Tyreek Hill, but that might be coming back on a hold. And it will. Very big break for San Antonio here. That would have put Miami up by a two possession lead. Now third and 20. We need to stop here for sure. And that'll be a sack. Timmy Reed gets him through the offensive lineman. Great play by him. And will that push Miami out of field goal range? I guess we'll have to see. Probably not. No, yeah, that's still within reasonable field goal range. Still not an easy one here as we will get the block. Atkins will block the field goal, and Miami will recover it. 
but it will be San Antonio Ball, our second blocked field goal of this season. Very nice play. And now at, with the third quarter winding down, we have the opportunity to retake the league lead. And that will be Melvin Ingram, I believe, in coverage on Lewis Smart. We'll take that matchup every single time it is given to us. Donovan Holmes with the carry, not able to get anything out of it really. Second goal, and that will bring up the fourth quarter. We are down three. Knocking on the door though, to take the lead. We'll flip this play here so we can maybe get rolling out to the right off the play action. And uh, the edge is just waiting for us there. Third and goal from the six. Really need a conversion here. Don't want to tie it up. We will if we have to, but I'd much prefer to just take the lead here. As that's a horrible read by me. What am I thinking? We won't do either. That one was just straight up garbage by me. I just, I don't know, I just didn't see Baker. As soon as I threw it though, I knew how bad of a decision it was, but I was thinking to throw it. Need to stop here by the defense. Going to continue to bring the blitz. That'll be a check down, but nice job by me. I know I'm trying not to do it, but in situations like that, I just know man's going to take an awful angle, so I just have to fix the angle a little bit. Third and two now, this would be a great time for us to get a stop. And we will do just that great job by Giles to bring down Edmonds short of the lines again. We've been gashed all game long. We'll come up with a massive stop there, and I gotta be better. That was easily my worst decision I've made all season long. And we'll start at the 43. Why did I throw that? I have no idea. On the play action now is Hamilton. He'll just take off and run. I don't, I know he'll just open down the field. I just don't trust him to make that throw on the run. We're going to run Texas here this time around. It's going to play this work fairly well for us throughout the season, and that will gain us five on first down. Second and five now for the Express. And I was about to throw it there to Hazleton, but saw the pressure coming in, didn't want to fumble. Just held on to the ball, and we're up to third and 15. Not an easy place to be. We're gonna try to hit Hazleton on the run, but yeah. That's what his throwing on the run is going to be. It's going to be hard to really get any throws on the run. But Welker here with a chance to tie the game from 53, and he'll do it easily. 22-22 here in the fourth. Of a very tightly contested ball game. That one will go out of the back of the end zone. Come on, Timmy Reed with the win, and he will get to Tagovailoa. He's going to share that sack with Bass at the end of the day. 
Let's go now. But a great play by Timmy Reed to get the win and get to the quarterback. Edmonds into traffic there. Looks like he had some room and he just ran straight. Tried to break go. it outside, we but we were ready for it. Third and 14 now. Check it down, and that will not be nearly enough. Fourth and seven for the Dolphins. And the defense with a massive stop. It's going to give us a chance to retake this lead late as Rambo tries to get a big return there. I really like the switch that we made with him at his punt return, though. I feel like he's this has been our best punt return game that we've seen. Um, just want to check in on our boy Lewis. He does already have it. Nice job. He has Superstar in the bag. No need to force anything there anymore. As of course, as much as I want to win this game since we're in it, I think it's just as important to get a Superstar tight end in Lewis Smart. You hate to say it, but it's kind of true for where we're at at this point of our franchise. Not really a winning team, and we're going to try to get it there. Oh, what a throw. Just over the reach of Channing Tindall. Wow. Tindall made a great play to make that much more contested than I thought it was going to be, but that throw was just passes out stretch turns. Hazleton able to concentrate and get the catch. I don't know if that was luck or skill or what it was, but either way, it was a first down for us as we continue to march down the field. Jeremiah Black is going to step on that one now. 9 for 28. Not the best day running for him. Donovan Holmes, after a slow start, has had a little bit more success for us when we're getting the chunk runs. That'll be a quick check down to Lewis Smart, bringing up third and four. Got to convert here. I'm not trying to settle for field goals. I want touchdowns. And that'll be, I thought it was just a regular out route, instead of like this weird bench trap, so I was expecting him to already be out. Yeah, it's a bench. So, ends up working out for me, but that was not what I thought it was. Lewis Smart's open, and we're going to give it to him, and he's going to score. Lewis Smart for the touchdown, San Antonio, and we will take the lead. 4-14 left in this game. Well, Sunday Night Football, they did not cover him. And we took the shot. Beautiful place pass. You don't have to throw him at, at all. The defender was there, but instead places it out in front. And Lewis Smart... Brings San Antonio the fourth quarter lead. Can we hold on to the lead? Is here the question here. The defense has done fairly well here, I think, in this second half. And they'll stop hurry, hurry. Edmonds there after a four yard game. Let's go! Second and six now for the Dolphins. And Edmonds will get the ball again. Franklin with a nice play to bring up third and three. 29 carries. That's got to be Edmonds' career high. And they'll try to run a screen, but Michael Franklin breaks it up. And they're going to punt here? They're going to regret punting here. I guess they have faith in their defense, being able to get one more big time stop. With three minutes left in this fourth quarter, we do not intend to be giving that ball back at all. I am turning the box a bit here, as you would expect, but Black finds the seam and gains six. Very nice start to this. 
We'll run the read option here. It looks like there are got multiple guys over on Hamilton's side though, so we'll just hand it off to Holmes, who will be just short of the first down. Now is the big moment. Can we convert here on this play? We will wait to see until after this two minute warning, of course. Don't want to be too foolish here with our clock management. But third and one. We just need one more play. Gonna go the strong power. Trying to check it down to his zone. I like the front that we saw, and it ends up being a first down and much more. Jeremiah Black will practically ice this game for the Express. Peyton Manning called the meeting, got some veterans on the team, and it looks like it might result in the ending of our five-game losing streak here in Miami in Sunday Night Football. Nice play there by Black to fight through tackles. That will be the first timeout for Miami. Second and four for the Express. Jeremiah Black tries to get it outside for a bit. Not able to really do it. Now third and three. Dolphins all out of timeouts. If we can convert this here, we'll be looking really good. And we can. Donovan Holmes finds the cutback lane. Cuts it upfield, gets the first down, and that will be a victory for the San Antonio Express in prime time on the road. Very nicely done. My first gameplay win by a team not from New York, so that's an accomplishment for me as well. And we will just nail this one out and call it a day here in Miami. Yeah, one more time of course but we will allow the clock to run out on this play and 29 22 will be the final score big time win for coach Eli Manning I think it's hard to say that this team hasn't overachieved to this point in the season three wins three and six seems pretty good for a team made up of nothing but rookies and only ha having nobody over 80 overall. We have a couple guys that we just got to 80 overall, of course. Nobody over 80 overall with the entire team. A lot of starters are in the 60s. They were 3 and 6. I think that's an accomplishment. 20 of 31 for 312. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. At least I didn't have a negative touchdown to pick ratio in this game. Jeremiah Black ends up with 4.2 a carry after a strong finish. 190 yards in a touchdown. Yeah, I think Lewis Smurf's going to be a superstar. 86 yards for Hazleton. And no one else really did too much. It was kind of a two-man show in the passing game. Honestly, those are the two guys that I actually trust in our passing game. So, yeah, I look for them often. Many TFLs. Surprising for how many... Uh, or, or, sorry, not how many, but how thoroughly we were gashed in the winning game. At least in the first half, I think we did a decent job with the defend the short pass uh, halftime adjustment to actually defend the run better. As Welker will get plus two kick accuracy is awesome. The 99 power and 82 accuracy for him is great. Lewis Smart will get an upgrade after his massive game. And a lot of stuff there for him. Two medium route and a short route being two of those things. D'Angelo Bramble will get an opportunity at an upgrade. What should we do for him? Like Speed Rusher is what we'll do here. See what we can get. Two for the smooth. We'll go the scheme fit hybrid for McAllister. And that will be it for the upgrades this week. We have to view the message. Let's get 
Lewis Smart, that superstar, and he does have it. 8,000 experience as well is obviously great. And we are ready to go into the bye week. Got some more upgrades here as well. Another one for Lewis Smart, as you might ex expect, getting 8,000 XP. We'll go with Vertical Threat once again. And nice upgrade there for him. Looking like a really, really solid player. As we know he is. As he's performed well in all the games that we've played, and he's also performed well in simulation. Time to do our bye week goal, however. We're just going to get the XP. Not having stamina for the next game is going to hurt, but... We just need our young guys developing. That's kind of the point of this year. Not to win as much as it is to see the development of some young guys. It's kind of cool to see four superstars now in our whatever the focus XP. We have a fifth, of course, in Walker, but he's already so good at kicker that I'm not really too worried about him continuing to get, like, more upgrades there. He's already so good. Eddie Hazleton. We'll go Playmaker. Just get those route runnings up. Gets four short and two medium, a release, and a catching, which you love to see. Now in the green on two of his route runnings. Medium being the one left in yellow. Chris Rhodes is our slot only guy, so we'll keep upgrading the slot. He did not have interest in resigning with us, so he isn't going to be back with us for next year, unfortunately. As Brian Pearson is up for upgrade, and we will go with, I suppose power is the way. Gets a strength. That's always fun. Now up to 98 strength. Guy's a beast. Donovan Holmes. We get the next upgrade. He's been pretty solid for us. I feel like the running game has been solid all around. And we will advance here past the bye week. Um, I guess let's we'll see what we want to do with maybe any staff points. Um, there's really only the player personnel tree that I think we have anything really to do. All these are at their max. All these are at their max. Yep, so it's just the player personnel tree that we have left, really. Um, let's do this one before I forget. Uh, the other ones don't really need anything. We're one point away from being able to do something else. So next episode, we'll be able to further our progress in the coaching tree even more. It says we could still do something. I wonder what it says we can do. All these are eight. These are done. All these are eight. Yeah, we can't do anything with seven. What's this game? Smoking. I don't know. Just triple checking. Yeah, all these are filled out. Oh, I guess the level two of these is worth five, but we don't really need the level two of any of those, so. No, yeah. Our, kind of our last goal here is to get to the bottom of that second player personnel tree, and then we'll be basically done with the coaching tree. And then we'll just have every year we can uh, unveil a hidden dev or whatever. And we will be playing up against the Chiefs and the Chargers in the next episode. The two top
toughest teams in our division. We chose the AFC West. We knew it would be pain. But that's the life we chose. And that's all I have for this episode. And I'll catch you in the next one.